Hey everybody, Chris Klotz with Stevenson Klotz Injury Firm here in Pensacola, Florida. We are still here at Pensacola Harley-Davidson and we are doing a safety day and we're covering several different topics. We are honored to have Master Tech David Church. This is impressive right here. We talked about this in our last episode, but he is he has achieved the highest level of certification um, that Harley has to offer. And I have already learned so much today. I can't even tell you thank you enough for everything that I've learned. Absolutely. But we're about to cover our next topic, which is brake brakes. fluid. Yeah. Brakes and brake fluid. So take it away. Okay, so brakes are probably the second most important thing when it comes to your bike. Uh, we always joke, you know, don't worry about brakes, they just slow you down. Yeah. But in all reality, <laughs> you want that. So Harley used to run dot five in their system which was purple, right? Looks cool. Yep. And now we use dot four. This is the newest stuff. This was a old bottle. I'm actually surprised they even had one of these laying around. Right. In 2018, <clears throat> I want to say it was, give or take, they came out with a new update to replace all the brake fluids for dot four within a certain year from like 2009 to 2011. And the reason was, is people wasn't changing their brake fluids out. Since they weren't changing the brake fluid out, they had a lot of corrosion was occurring and it was destroying the ABS module and the brake modules, brake master cylinders. There's all words, but I'll show you some examples of stuff. So this is the this is the new dot four. This is the dot four platinum is what platinum. it's called. Okay. Harley's like this is so much better. We made it platinum. Gotcha. I don't know. <laughs> I can't tell you exactly what it is, but I know the idea is to cut down on corrosion over a long period of time, right? So what happens? Dot four is hydroscopic, so it builds up and develops water, pulls the water directly out of the sky, is what happens. And I should have got the brake tester, but I did not. So this is the old dot five, right? That's here. the old this dot five. Used to work. And this was a, what, silicone-based? Silicone-based. Product, and we know that because it says dot five on it. Correct. And it looks like your blue Curacao. Yes, it does. <laughs> so I got the brake tester to uh, show you how this works. If you use a flashlight and look at the brake fluids, you can see how purple. Oh, you only to sit it down. Sorry. Either way. So you can see the water has separated from the silicone base. So you can tell that water is in the system, right? Mm -hmm. Versus looking at this, you can't tell. The water gets absorbed fully by the actual brake fluid. So you can't actually see which one would be different, right? So you have to use an actual brake tester. We have a tool for that. So this is over 4% water, and that's dangerous, right? Harley says 3% or higher, replace your brake fluid. Okay. Very important. And to show you. And you added, you put some water in this one, right? Intentionally, yes. Right. And this one, no water, the lid on. You can see that it's only, or it's setting at zero. Right. If I leave this lid off as we talk, the water at content will start to rise. Really? Yeah. So that happens pretty quickly. It does, very it's quickly. Just pulling the, it's pulling the humidity right out of the air into the fluid. Hydroscopic It's the official word. So what happens, the bottle that I used, once you open that bottle, you have one day to use it and throw it away. Okay. But as soon as I open it, I always throw the rest away, always. Because if you're buying new brake fluid, you don't want brake fluid that's been exposed to air already. Right. Even with the lid screwed in all the way, it will still develop that air inside those threads, or gotcha. through those threads, right? Now the problem is that master cylinders are not perfectly closed off because they have pressure in there. They have to allow for air to get in and out. Okay. But it's a very slow process. Right, so Harley says every two years or 4% water, 3% or over, really. You always wanna test it, always, it's very important. So what happens if you don't 
The first thing that we look at, especially if your bike comes in, if we look at the year and it's past two years, we're pretty much going to recommend it no matter what. We will always test your brake fluid almost on every service we check them. Safety inspections, we check them always. In Florida, we have very high humidity, as we all know, and we know that there's a lot of water in the air. Right. All that water is going to get into your brake fluid before that two year period. And we did a safety inspection on my bike was our first segment that we did. We did a walk around and we saw some corrosion and yes. you were betting that I have how, what percent of water? I guaranteed over 4%. Over 4 in my, okay, so we're, we're gonna bring my bike in in the last segment and we're yeah. gonna actually take a look and see the walk of shame is going to show over 4%. <laughs> I will guarantee my whole paycheck <laughs> like hands down but what happens so this is a good example you can see the corrosion around the rubber mm -hmm. these two screws crush this rubber into place and that is the only thing that's keeping air and condensation out of the brake fluid besides the little bitty vent hole that are only on new bikes because it's not on this one okay so what happens as liquid gets out, this dot four is extremely corrosive. It breaks down everything it touches. If you pour it on the paint of any car, you're going to strip the paint off, hands down. So don't do it. If you get it on your hands, I assume it's bad for you too. It feels very oily. Yeah. But if you get it on your hands and then touch a painted surface, right. you can guarantee that's gone. Okay. And I've seen people where their phones have completely lost the entire top screen from getting it on their fingers and then texting somebody and their phone gets destroyed. That is worth the price of watching right there. Absolutely. Don't mess with brake fluid and touch your phone. And then play with your phone. <laughs> so this, because this corrosion is here, I know for a fact that brake fluid was coming out of this gasket, right? Doesn't take a genius. Mm -hmm. Sea water, it's gotta be a hose, right? Well, I, I was wondering why on my on mine, mine's a little bit low. Mine's on the lower side. It's been doing and it for a while. And I was wondering what, why is that particular area of paint peeling and nothing else is peeling, but it's from the corrosiveness of the fluid that's slowly seeping over. As it seeps out, okay. a lot of this, you see these bubbles? Yep. It's already going underneath the paint. Have you ever seen a snake trail in the grass and the sand? Yep. It goes underneath and just keeps going. That's the same thing. Gotcha. This fluid comes out, goes inside there and continues down. But that corrosion shows you that air and water is getting inside here. Okay. And I can take this cap off real quick and show you how there's corrosion in here, guaranteed. I know for a fact because I replaced this. <laughs> but on top of that, this is what happens. Yeah, come, Amy, can you get a shot of this? This is crazy. So this. Is that's a gelatinous, almost like a pudding jello kind of. Yeah, it's more like jello. Yeah, in there that happens after. The overexposure to water. Yeah. Once you get air in the system. So that's water in there and you can still see the corrosion. And because of that, I want to show you another little thing. So what happens is this jelly, it's pretty much what it turns into, it gets inside the pistons and the ABS module. During that recall, Harley came out with it and said, you know what, this is 100% not our fault because you guys are not replacing your brake fluid, hands down. But we will, we will pay for it. So Harley came out with the recall and paid to replace the brake fluid of every bike in that year. Holy cow. And they didn't have to, like hands down. That's Some people are going to be like, oh yeah, they should. It says in every manual, every owner's guide, everything, every dealership should be telling you every two years or over 4%. And it's on us to check it. It's on your local dealerships to check it. And it's on you to know if my bike's older than two years, I got to replace it, yep. right? But Harley took it on themselves to actually replace it. So they came out with this platinum and it works a lot better. It's supposed to help prevent this, but it's not 100% bulletproof. It'll still happen after X amount of time. I don't know how much. I've never actually timed it. But the rule of thumb is every two years, you want new, you want new brake fluid at least, and then you want to check it every time you have a service done. That's the goal. Yep. You have to have it done. So what happens, that gel 
starts to get inside here and you'll see this plunger right here. As you push that in, that gel starts to get in there and this plunger doesn't fully return. Right now it does because it's not that bad. Yet. And you saw that happening on my bike outside, Absolutely. just a little the starts of that. Absolutely. Yeah, and I've had my I've had my bike now for right at two years. And so I and I don't know what the service history of it was before I got it. So and we're about to find out. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be bad. So what happens, this plunger is pushes this lever back into the switch and turns off your brake light. Okay. So if this plunger isn't returning all the way, your brake light is going to stay on. And then you burn out bulbs or the most, the dangerous part really would be someone doesn't know when you're stopping. Right. Because they assume that's your running lights. And now you're slowing down and they're still not paying attention or they're looking at their phone or whatever. And they don't realize there's a variance in speed. So they hit you because they never saw those lights actually light up. Right. So brakes, very important. Dot five doesn't work as well as dot four does. Hands okay. down. That's why Harley went away from it. The dot five system, as you pull it in, you have to get well past halfway before your brakes actually started to engage. Gotcha. Just the build of it. So this is, so Harley's not even making this product anymore, are they? They make it because yeah. older bikes still use it. Okay. These do not, you can't just change them. Gotcha. Because the gaskets inside here, the rubber that's been exposed to that liquid its entire life, can't handle this new liquid being introduced. Gotcha. So if you changed them out just because you're like, hey, I saw a video on YouTube, it looked like fun. Right. Switch it out. All the gaskets in the entire system are going to break. They'll break down, really. They get corroded and ate away. Okay. So every liquid starts just leaking out of everything. Big mess. I haven't seen it. I've heard about it. Okay. Big mess. So that's another great tip. Yeah. Cool. So brake fluids are very important. This is what happens. On top of that, braking in general, uh, as the years go on, Harley, everybody really, but Harley has gotten a lot better about their braking systems. They've gone from regular brakes to ABS, to cornering, to reflex braking, to hold braking. So if you're on a hill and you're holding your brakes, you don't have to strong arm it, it'll hold it electrically. Uh, trikes have interlinked braking which they kind of went away from for the new traction control. We use traction control on a lot more stuff now. And those modules, we have a six point axis, which is six different ways that the bike is looking at what angle you're at. So as soon as you start to apply the brakes, the bike will know, hey, we need to engage cornering traction control or cornering limitations or whatever. That is amazing. So as time goes on, Harley is constantly coming out with better information, better products, better stuff for braking. So. Very cool. The newest stuff, really good. Gotcha. And if the ABS module ever goes out, ever goes bad, standard brakes will engage. So you still have braking. They have backup features to help with that. Perfect. Well, thank you, David Church, Master Tech, with Harley Davidson Pensacola, Chris Klotz with Stevenson Klotz Law Firm. We're just bringing you some safety tips. I've learned so much, David. I can't even thank you and tell you how much I've learned just in the little while that I've been here. We've got one more episode that we're going to do after this, and we're going to right, we're going to roll into what's the next episode going to be? What are we going to do next? Uh, safety. Oh, not safeties. Maintenance, services, service, maintenance, service, maintenance, and safety. So. We're gonna do the roll of shame and roll my old bike in here and we're gonna tear it apart and see what we need to do. Just so, a little bit. Yep, so Chris Klotz, David Church with uh, Harley Davidson. Um, we'll be back in a little while. Stay tuned for the next episode. Thanks you guys for watching, bye.